Hi, this is David Salee, and in this episode, we look at another stat that gained a lot of attention from the video where I played Simon, and that is the longest putt at 640 feet. How in the world is this possible? Well, to understand, we have to look at basically three different groupings for the putts. There's organic, which is a putt that just happens to happen during the regular course of a round. There's artificial, where you actually move to certain locations to enhance the length of the putt. And then there is exploitative, where you use particular exploits in the game or glitches to make that putt as long as possible. And that's the one that we're going to focus on today. An exploit that was discovered was that the throw controls were actually still active even though you had released a disc. So you could actually change a throw in mid-flight and change its type. Switch the type in mid-flight from backhand to putt and if the disc went in the basket it would actually register as if it started out as a putt. Didn't matter the distance. At that point, it was just a matter of seeking out the longest hole that you could convert from a backhand into a putt and successfully make. Here is some footage of what that process actually looked like. Did you catch what just happened? You had to be pretty quick in order to pull off this particular trick. Let's slow the footage down so we can take a more detailed look at what the process was. Immediately after releasing the disc, you had to hit the backhand control and, as it's sliding off the screen, hit putt before it disappears. This would convert the throw into a putt. And if you look closely, as it lands in the basket, you can actually see the putting arrows coming off of the disc. I took this technique out to crow's nest number five, the big square, where I was able to achieve my longest putt of 640 feet, all by using an exploitative technique. So there you go. That's the story of the longest putt and how I used an exploit to, you know, you know what? No, I'm not going to leave it there. I'm not going to just have an exploitive, glitchy longest putt as one of my stats. I believe I can find a better way and I can make it even longer using a legitimate method. It's time for a little redemption. Turns out, increasing your longest putt, though artificial, is as easy as pie. Well, technically as easy as pie, as that's a reference to Alex Orange Pie, who is not only a phenomenal player, but an amazing YouTube content generator for Disc Golf Valley. Plus, he co-wrote the user's guide, so that guy kind of knows what he's talking about. His technique makes use of, you guessed it, crow's nest number five, the big square, and a few other little minor modifications. Uh, first off, you have to hike to a certain position so you gain a lot of altitude. Next, you also need to make sure that you have a three tailwind. In addition to that, you need a light glide fuse, plus it's more beneficial to switch it from right-handed to left-handed with your putt, as that enhances the flight of the disc 
and the putting method towards the basket. From there it's just a matter of throwing repeated shots and keeping an eye on the tracer line and listening for the disc to identify where it is that it's landing to see if you can start to fine tune it and eventually get it in the basket. If you're very unlucky you can have one very unfortunate thing happen. Oh no, it's the dreaded tap-in! That means that you have to start the entire process over again. Just to add another wrinkle into the process, if you actually want to keep your long putt stat, then you need to achieve this through means other than the practice area. If you just go to the practice area and keep repeating that particular hole, the stat will stay for a little bit and then eventually disappear. For it to actually stick, you need to use something like Challenge the Valley, which means you're going to have to play the first four holes, get to hole five, and hope that you have all the right conditions for success. So what just happened there was probably one of the luckiest shots that I've had in quite some time, where it actually nailed the chains and got far enough away that it didn't trigger that dreaded tap-in. So this gave me a really good indication that I was on the right track with the right height, with the right aim, everything else, so it was just a matter of throwing it and hoping that I got lucky. Another good feedback shot, this time off the guard, so I know I am right there, right on the edge of making it go in. Bombs away! It looks like it is tracking very nicely. Could this be the one? Oh yeah, there it is! A new record putt that exceeds my glitch of 640 feet. So there you go. All the information you need to set your own personal best putt. And who knows, you might even do better than mine. As a parting word of wisdom though, I strongly suggest that once you are done doing this, you make sure you go in and change those settings back to right-handed, if you are right-handed. You'll thank me later. Manipulating the throw controls may have been patched, but the aim controls are still active, so you can feel free to play around with those after your throw and see if you have any kind of interesting results. You can also confuse people with the disc flight in the replay. Thanks for watching this confessional slash road to redemption video. My name is David Slee, and I will catch you later.